I often wonder what's the impact of charging your battery whilst driving in a plug-in hybrid car. Well, today you join me in the model year 24 Volvo XC60 T6 Recharge with an empty battery with a quarter of a tank of petrol and we are going to find out what the efficiency difference is in driving on pure petrol with an empty battery and then driving back with petrol whilst charging the battery of the car. Is there such a big difference? Well, time to find out. Let's get started. So before I get going, some administration to do. I'll be driving up and down the same stretch of road of 50 kilometers long. The engine is warm, wind direction barely any, so that's good, wind will not have really any impact today. Besides that, this car, the T6 Recharge, has a fuel tank or petrol tank of 71 liters. Currently we have a quarter, so that is about 18 liters. At this moment it indicates that I can drive 180 kilometers, so let's see. We got an empty battery, so an empty 18.8 kilowatt hour battery in the car. Bit of a waste, but hey, this is for scientific reasons. And finally, this car is about 1900 kilograms, 1911 I believe, so pretty heavy as well. So that's it for now, I guess. I'm gonna reset the trip meter. There we go. So let's get going. At this moment, I'll be driving the hybrid mode whilst not charging the battery. So let's find out what the efficiency is. So whilst we are driving, it's nice to tell you guys a bit more about the car itself. This is the most up-to-date Volvo XC60, the model year 24 T6 Recharge. Basically the version existing next to the other plug-in hybrid XC60, which is the T8 Recharge. This one good for 355 horsepower, plenty quick. As I said already, there's an 18.8 kilowatt hour battery pack in this car, which gives you about 70 full electric kilometers. Good for your daily commuting, for example. So yeah, you can really daily this car as an EV. Now, besides that, this is the ultimate bright, basically the most luxurious spec you can get. So over here, I have laminated glass. I have a 360 cam, Bowers & Wilkins, 4C air suspension, Nappa leather interior with the ventilated seats and also massage seats, sunroof, I got the Google system. Yeah, this thing is just a joy to drive in. And uh, yeah, that's also a nice part of this video. I get to drive it for a bit more. But um, yeah, this car is just overall a very solid and enjoyable car. We made a trip to the Ardennes the past few days with this one as well four persons in it and yeah we all kind of agreed that it was a super comfortable ride also pretty interesting the efficiency of this car on a longer trip a longer highway trip um, from this past weekend was also pretty impressive because well the battery was also empty i did not have any opportunity to charge it at our destination in the ardennes so yeah i drove back home also with an empty battery and yeah it was quite efficient so make sure you also check out that video but for now, I guess I'm going to turn up the music, enjoy the Bowers and Wilkins for a bit, and then I'll check back in with you around the, the first 50 kilometers. All right, folks, first 50 kilometers driven and efficiency so far has been 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which I find very decent. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So for now, we are turning back onto the highway. We're going to do the same stretch back home. I'm going into settings and I'm going to press battery usage we're currently on auto there's also safe and charge so charge is on so there we go charging the battery and do i notice anything well not that much i can see next to the battery icon on the driver's display there's now a little electricity 
um, logo. So of course indicating that it is charging. So yeah, I also wonder how much charge I will get from this 50 kilometer drive. That's also interesting to see. But um, yeah, let's reset the trip computer as well. So 7.3, there we go, reset and counting once again. So far so good. I have been driving around 105 kilometers an hour on the pilot assist. I always enjoy that a lot. And besides that, the 4C air suspension just makes this car really comfortable, especially for cruising on the highway. Now, some things I like a lot about this car, the visibility all over in this car, comparing it to my own Volvo C40, which is pretty much the worst visibility-wise Volvo you can get currently. Well, in this XC60, it's, well, there's a lot to see. Also big rear view mirrors. I can see plenty in the interior rear view. And yeah, it feels very spacious in here. Also, of course, of this light interior. Yeah, you kind of need to like it or not. I tend to think it's a bit of a classic or chic interior. And I, well, I often have more the R design or the dark trim interiors. But I gotta say, I am getting a bit of a soft spot for this interior. It's very nice to be in and it's, you know, it gives that extra spacious feeling, which yeah, I enjoy actually a lot. So yeah, good times over here. Now, a thing I do need to mention what is a bit weird is that you cannot see the consumption figures of the car. So I can go in here in the trip computer and see how much liters, for example, I'm burning, how far I've driven the average speed. But there's no application in the center screen that shows how much kilowatt or electricity you have used during the drive or which you are generating currently. That's a very weird thing. It's just not on this car, on the Google car. I can remember that on the previous census infotainment, the Volvos did have that. I'm pretty sure they did. But yeah, at this moment, you cannot see anything basically in here, which is a bit weird. That is because of the Google system, which has been implemented. Now there is the trip meter or sorry, the driving journal. Now the application, which you can connect to your Volvo on call application on your phone. And there you can see figures um, of your well, latest drives. So they are kind of updating that but I would like to also have just an application with the specifics in the car as well. A bit weird. Anyway, for now, time to turn the music back on, resume this drive, and I'll update you guys in a little bit. All right, folks, so there we go, 50 kilometers on the clock on our way back. And the stats so far, average speed, 98 kilometers an hour. And total efficiency with that is 11 liters per 100 kilometers. So that is 7.3 versus 11. So a little less than four liters, 3.7 liters total difference in efficiency over 50 kilometers whilst charging your battery. That's uh, interesting. So far we got 21 electric kilometers in return for that. So that's kind of okay, I guess. And also interestingly enough, whilst I only have about 60 kilometers of petrol range left, the car did not intervene and did not put me back into hybrid mode yet. I'm saying yet because I kind of expect it will do a little bit later, but yeah. So there we go, guys. I'm not too sure if this is good or this is bad. I guess it kind of depends on where you can charge. If you can charge for free, for example, at home with solar panels or not, or at your work. And also what the price of petrol is. Over here in the Netherlands, a liter of petrol is about two euros. Currently, that is uh, quite expensive. So yeah, it kind of depends on, well, your country and your personal situation, whether it is interesting to charge the battery whilst driving or not. But it's an interesting experiment, which I actually considered more often. I also get questions about it from you guys, also from the Lincoln Co-01 and whatnot. You were also quite curious what the effect was of charging the battery. So I guess that's kind of the same as this car. So yeah, that being said, let me know what you think of this little test in the comments down below. Do you think it's worth your while to charge the battery whilst driving or not? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. 
As always, I thank you a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and also subscribe. We are on our way to 10,000 subscribers, so please do so. You also help me by doing so to get cool opportunities such as well, test driving the Volvo EX30 as one of the first people in the world, for example. So make sure you subscribe. Alrighty guys, for now, have a great day. And of course, I see you next week in a brand new video. Bye bye.